May the words that I say and the words that you hear be in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Does anyone want to take a guess? Emery, you can't because you know the answer. How many laws and commandments there are in the Old Testament? 613. Yes. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> 613. That was fun. There are 613 laws and commandments in the Old Testament. Uh, that's a lot. We started with one. We started with one. Do not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. One. We did not do well. We, we went 0 for 1. Then we got 10. And because we're people, and we like order, and I know we like order, because you're all sitting in the same seats you sat in last week and the week before, we're not, we are not satisfied with just 10 because we start to break down the letter of the law. And over time, we gather more and more. It was the Hebrews venturing into Babylon, the home of law, where we picked up so many of these laws, so many other laws that Jesus even references in the gospel today, that we get overwhelmed with how do we worship God? Well, we hear in Deuteronomy that we come to God by following God's commandments. But then we get something very different in the Gospel of Matthew. So today I want us to hold those two in tension. I want us to first think back, though, when you were little or maybe you had little ones who were little. Do you remember uh, starting, like, clubhouses or when you and your friends would gather? You'd, you'd make clubs. And you'd first start off with simple rules, right? Like, who's allowed? Maybe it was no girls allowed. Okay, easy enough. The church was like that for a very long time. It did, it did, not, it did not serve us well. But then you start having more, well, what about, what about Sammy? Is Sammy allowed? Well, no, Sammy kind of smells funny. Sammy's not allowed either. What about Joey? Well, Joey's allowed, right? And you're, even as kids, you, don't, you start seeing these rules become more and more complicated. And the, the larger any organization grows, the more laws and rules it has. We see this in our own country too, right? We started with the Articles. We now, then 27 amendments to the Constitution. And then for the last 200 years, the Supreme Court has made rulings on the Constitution. Now, you have to go to school for eight years plus and have hundreds of thousand dollars in student loans just to even interpret the laws we have in the country. It's overwhelming, but it's natural because we like order. And that's the setting in which Jesus preaches this morning. For the third week in a row, we find Jesus on the, at the Sermon on the Mount preaching. And Jesus, in one way, makes life much easier this morning, right? You've heard it said many times, if you do not kill, do not murder. Well, oh, Jesus, what is killing? What is murder? What is life? What if they hit? No, ignore it. Do not be angry with your neighbor. You've heard it said, do not commit adultery. We've heard it argued many times, even in political spheres. What is adultery? Right? Well, it was only one date. It was only one kiss. No, no, no. Ignore the law. Any person who has lust in their heart commits adultery. Jesus is getting at the root of these laws, that it's not necessarily the letter of the law or the deed, but it's the intent. Do not hate do not lust. Do not sever ties. In a way, it makes it simple for us, right? We don't have to worry about the 613 laws. We have to worry about the two. 
Love your God with all your heart and all thy might. And the second is like unto it, love your neighbor as yourself. Easy enough. Except we practice a faith in the real world. And loving thy neighbor as yourself is not always easy. Particularly given Jesus' standards of loving your neighbor as yourself this morning. Jesus goes to great length to describe how we are to treat our human relationships. Now, this one's hard for me, particularly in the last, oh, let's say five or six months, because it's become much easier for me to push out relationships with those whom I disagree with than it is to engage in conversation. I think about my father-in-law. I think about my father-in-law because in ways we're so similar. We're both pastors. We're priests. We both love Christy. But when we gather for dinner, there's the 800-pound elephant in the room. Or in our case, it's the donkey. Or maybe it's the donkey and the elephant that are trying to eat dinner at the same time. <laughs> I don't know. And I don't know about you or how much time you spend on the internet or, or on Facebook or anything to that extent, but the way we consume news has changed in such a way that our internet tells us what to watch and listen because it knows what we like, right? It's going to show us like, I'm a Patriot fan. I'm not a Patriot fan, but you'll forgive me for that. You're a Patriot fan. You're going to get news about the Patriots, right? You would like this. You like the movies. You're going to get news about the movies. But it works that way with our politics, too. If you like the left, we're going to give you the left. If you like the right, we're going to give you the right. And it divides us. But what that allows us to do is push out. We start actively doing that. And if you're on, on Facebook or on the news, you, how easy it is to see that person we disagree with and go, you know, I'm going to put you in this box over here. We're going to pretend we're friends, but you don't need to know you're in this box, but you are. Does anyone have any relationships like that? Okay, thanks. Thanks, Faye. One or two, a few. Okay, good, good. We're on the same page. So we're all here this morning. So I'm not, gonna, I'm not saying we all need to go home and take care of those relationships before we come to the altar, because that doesn't make good church. Uh, but we are going to get to the confession in a little while. And as we get to the confession, I want us to hold to what Jesus is talking about. Because in one way, it makes it easier not to focus on the letter of the law, but on the intent. Well, when we start talking about relationship, emotions get involved. And I think that's what's easy about legalism. Is as long as we're following this, it doesn't matter if I disagree with you, because I'm right. Darn it. And Jesus says, no. It doesn't matter if you're right. It actually matters to God very little if we're right or wrong. Because besides being pastors, besides the love of Christy, what my father and I have in common, and what you all have in common this morning, what Donald Trump and Barack Obama have in common is we are all beloved children of God. All the other stuff God doesn't see. Those man-made divisions we've created. Those lines that we've drawn in the sand that we stand on one side or the other. Well, certainly God does care about how we treat the other, particularly the marginalized. When it comes to our differences, we learn today that God doesn't care about that. Because in God's eyes, we're all the same. What God cares about, what we hear through Jesus this morning, is that it's our job not to seek those divisions, but to mend those relationships. Now, I want to acknowledge 
there are some relationships in our lives that are easier to mend than others. My father-in-law and I disagree. We can acknowledge that, we can love and move on. But there are relationships in our lives that are rent through deep pain and hurt. Those aren't as easy to mend. And then you may not even be at a point where you want to mend those relationships. Or maybe you've gotten to a point in your life where life's just easier because you've put that relationship out. I want to acknowledge how difficult those relationships are because we have them. We all have them. But that's why we come and ask for forgiveness. That's why we come to church because we know we're not there yet. It's not an excuse. It's just an awareness of our need for grace. In a few moments, we're gonna, we will confess. We're going to confess the same confession that we, preach, we pray every week. But this Sunday, I want us to be mindful when we come to that line, God, forgive us those things done and those things left undone. May we be mindful of the thing we've left undone this week are those relationships we haven't tended to. Those boxes that we've placed people in so we could ignore our differences and just move on. Because what Jesus is saying this morning is that's not enough. That we have to be right with one another as brothers and sisters, as children of God before we come and partake in this heavenly banquet. After the sermon, we're going to have a moment of silence. I invite you to pray into this space those names and faces that are on your heart. Those relationships that have fallen away through disagreement, through pain, maybe through real hurt. It's not easy to engage those names and faces, but let us pray into that discomfort this morning and bring those names with us into time of confession, but also to the altar today. And may when we come and join around the altar, we place those relationships here in front of God and say, God, I hear you this morning in the gospel. I hear your word made real through Jesus, and I hear that it's not easy. I thank you that you've made it a little easier by giving us the ability to follow the intent of your law, not the 613 commandments. At the same time, there are people in my life it's really hard to make amends with. So I need your grace, and I need your love. In 2017, it becomes easy to forget why we need church. And I think this is part of the central tenet. Because here, on the corner of Peabody and Mammoth, we hear Jesus Christ. And Jesus tells us, in this, the most divisive time in this country's history, the only thing that matters is that when we look out and see the other, we see a fellow child of God. And all the rest will take care of itself. This morning, as we pray together, as the beloved family of God, may we take our example out into this world and be an example of God's love so we may be the hope that this world needs. Amen. Thanks for listening. If you like the sermon, click subscribe and give us a thumbs up below. Your feedback helps us share what God is up to here in Londonderry with the rest of the internet. See you next week.